Every classroom has an emergency go bag, which is red, very recognizable, and a bucket, which is a toilet. But it also holds a lot of supplies that you're going to need. So every time you go out on a drill, whether it's a fire drill or an earthquake drill or anything, take both of them. You can assign uh, responsible students to do it as well, as long as you're sure to get these out there onto the tarps with your class. So let's go through the go bag first. Every kit is standard. No matter how many kids are in your class, these are set for 32 students. So we've got enough of everything for everyone. These are blankets. Here's an example of one. Very compact, very warm, or at least waterproof if you need it. So every student will have one of these blankets. Take up a lot of space, but they're very important. Now we've got the first aid kit. These used to be held separately, but they were easy to forget. Um, on the way out of the room. So, inside this medical kit, first aid kit, you've got bandages. Again, enough for about 30 kids. Different sizes, small, large. And, uh, let's see here. There's a manual in case you need to look things up. You could, it basically says what these are, but there's a cotton roll, temperature takers. That goes on the forehead, actually, these fever scan. Four of these triangular bandages, that would be for a, uh, an elbow or an arm that you're trying to immobilize. We've got wound cleaner, ammonia inhalant, wire splint, gauze compress. We've also got 12 more of those gauze pads which can be used as compresses here. Tongue depressors, five. One cold compress, and remember if you need more, go to the next classroom over because they've got the same kit. You've got a urine specimen cup. Not honestly sure you're going to be taking specimens, but if you need to, you can. You've got tourniquets as well, two of them. Check with the first aid station before you put a tourniquet on. It's very um, serious when you do that. You want to do it right and only when it's necessary. You've got 12 bobby pins. Those can come in handy. Swabs. Again, we're not taking a lot of samples here, but this may come in handy. Uh, cleaning wounds. Alcohol prep pads. Hand sanitizer. Every kid has that. Four of these uh, bandages, which you can use to wrap gauze onto a body part. We've got tweezers, scissors, adhesive waterproof tape. So this is essential, I'm gonna pack it up later, but that's essentially what is in that kit. Also in the go bag, you have a hand crank flashlight. These are the best because they'll always work for you as long as you can get somebody to crank it for you. There is also a lantern, which is not in this kit, so we will get a replacement for that. These are the class reporting forms, very important, because the first thing you'll do when you get to the tarp down there is write in who is absent, first your teacher name, your room number, who's absent, who's missing, and who's injured, any other additional information. You're gonna get this to the ICC, the Incident Command Center, immediately, because they will then dispatch somebody in search and rescue to go get that kid in the classroom if they're not ambulatory. Okay. If they can't move or you shouldn't move them, you'll leave them in the building. But if it's possible to get them out, you can get them out. Um, you've also got duct tape here and your tarp. Every classroom has a tarp. That's for you to sit on when you get to the emergency assembly area, the EAA, which is the lower yard. And you know from previous drills exactly where your class goes. This is a very important zip right here. You reach into the zipper pocket and you have your room number. Thank you to room 18 for demonstrating today. You have staff member tags as well, and your roster. This is the roster of your students. This is important because roll is taken electronically now. This is the only paper copy you're gonna have, and you should be taking regular roll during an incident um, multiple times to make sure that you've still got a handle on every kid in your charge. But every staff member, as soon as you get down to the tarp, not before, but as soon as you get to the emergency assembly area, put on your neon vest. That helps the ICC, is the command center, the principal, to see you and to know where the adults are on campus. Now, let's look in the classroom lockdown kit. If you're in the classroom lockdown, you're gonna need this, it's a toilet. Very handy. Oh look, there they are. Okay, so here are the vests that uh, you would have access to and should put on as soon as you're out of the building with your kids' safety. So let's just go through this. There is a roll of toilet paper. We have feminine hygiene products. These are maxi pads. Four. Disposal plastic gloves. The kids should use these almost like food grade, um, food service um, 
gloves when they're using the toilet for safety. They should then take them off inside out and throw them away in this strong plastic garbage bag, okay? We also have some tissue paper. I mean, this is for uh, a Kleenex, for blowing your nose or whatever, hand sanitizer. Again, those kids should be sanitizing their hands after they take the gloves off. There is a tarp. This can be used with the small roll of duct tape to create a little privacy barrier. Let's just look in the corner here. In this room, you could put duct tape up on the wall with this tarp. Wet naps, kitty litter. Goes without saying, really, you throw a little bit of that into this. These are the bio bags that line this five gallon, and every use, you close it up and put it into one of these bags. Put them all into a bag so that they are double sealed. That concludes the tour of your go bag and your emergency bucket. Don't forget to take them both with you out of the building every time you go for every drill. Also, every classroom has a diversion kit. It may be packed in this bucket, it may be in this bag, depending on space. But let me show you what's in there. We've got colored pens to use. We've got uh, different paper that you can pass out. This is a diversion, so the kids have something to do. So you can keep them occupied. We put some puzzles in. We've got candy, so there are 30 pieces of candy in there. So if you've got more than 30, you have to fight over it. Uh, some of them may have a little more. A couple of balls, a pack of cards, some uh, pencils. There's a, a pencil sharpener as well. And index cards, which may be easier to have people write on. This is all just meant to divert the kids and uh, um, take their mind off of the emergency that's unraveling in front of them. And um, I, I understand that some teachers have musical instruments. And so playing music or doing some sort of activity with the kids will be very good to divert their attention during a drill.